In 2311, Starfleet tied its own hands when it signed the Treaty of Algeron with the Romulan Star Empire. This led to a ban on Federation worlds developing cloaking technology in order to uphold a peace with Romulus and prevent another Romulan war after the incendiary Tomed incident. But before this, cloaking technology was known to Starfleet and had been the subject of much study. Hi, Rick here with a quick video looking into the history of cloaking devices within Starfleet. There will be spoilers ahead for Star Trek Discovery Season 3 and other series, so be warned. As far back as 2151, the NX-01 Enterprise had encountered the Sulaban Cabal, a sect of Sulaban who had been provided with technology from the future, specifically cloaking devices. These were hampered by the tech of the time and could be countered with a quantum beacon that was provided by a future Federation faction seeking to balance the discrepancy. Not long after, barely a year into its exploration of deep space, the NX-01 ran afoul of a Romulan cloaked minefield, followed by several Tavaro warbirds. At this time, cloaking tech was known as a cloak screen and still in its infancy, although the Romulans were ahead of the curve when it came to its application. During the Earth-Romulan War of 2155-2161, to the Star Empire seldom deployed their cloaking devices on missions, probably because Starfleet had retained its knowledge of the Quantum Beacon. Nice job on the Temporal Prime Directive there, guys. Instead, the Romulans often resorted to simpler methods of hiding, such as lowering power emissions and coasting into enemy space or hiding in sensor interference. Because few Romulan vessels were captured and those that were seemed to not even have cloaking devices installed, Starfleet research and development had little to go on when it came to creating their own. This problem persisted into the 23rd century, when Starfleet came into conflict with the Klingons. As of 2254, the Klingon Empire had obtained cloaking devices from somewhere. The Apocrypha states it was discovered on board the ancient sarcophagus vessel and restored, but who knows where ancient Klingons got it? Maybe they pillaged it? Point is that the second time Starfleet was facing a foe that had a superior method of stealth to their ships. The Starfleet had been experimenting with its own cloaking theories, but had hit a roadblock caused by a lack of power. Section 31 in the meantime, although hoarding much experimental gear and things that would eventually find their way into regular circulation, surprisingly was no better off on this front. They operated on several ships, the NCIA 93s, that were designed from the ground up to evade sensor scans when in a low power dark mode, but this was effectively just a superior form of power dampening that any vessel can do. I assume Starfleet eventually found a way to counter early cloaks, as by 2266 the Romulans were back at it again with a new cloaking device that the Enterprise 1701 had a lot of trouble with. This device, however, was still not immune to Starfleet sensors, and the Enterprise was able to vaguely shadow the bird of prey and eventually destroy it. In 2268, Starfleet had had enough of being behind on this front, dispatched Kirk and crew to procure a device, a new model that seemed to have rectified even the minor vulnerability from two years prior. This device was captured and returned to Starfleet for study. Over the next couple of years, the Klingon Empire would go on to create more cloaking devices, and some suspect that they are also of Romulan origin. Eventually, Starfleet's first-hand research into the cloak led to a number of vulnerabilities to be uncovered, methods for tracking a cloaked ship. But as always with an arms race, as an exploit is found, it's addressed, and a newer cloak is rolled out. Eventually, however, the Treaty of Alderaan was signed which halted all development on the device. Starfleet would however continue to develop its own varieties of stealth technology based on forms of invisibility that weren't affiliated with the Romulan cloaking system. However, the most notable violation of the treaty was uncovered in 2370 by Captain Picard and Commander Riker. The USS Pegasus, under the command of then-Captain Pressman, had developed its own experimental phase cloak 12 years earlier. The project was cancelled when the ship was wrecked, but it was still in direct opposition to the tenuous peace between the UFP and the Star Empire. 
However, the Star Empire had little time to dwell on this, as the Dominion War erupted and they allocated a Romulan-operated cloaking device to the USS Defiant in favour for all the intel Starfleet had on the Dominion. The device was only to be operated by a Romulan officer, who went on to become one of the most prominent members of the... wait, to rule vanished inexplicably? Ah. The Bajoran wormhole was also mined with cloaked self-replicating mines. Presumably the Federation had mutual permission to do that too. What Starfleet probably didn't have permission for was the cloaking device aboard the secret holodeck ship of 2375. Although their observation posts were hidden with holographic overlays, the hollow ship downright had a cloaking device. So clearly, by this time, Starfleet had learned how to make their own cloaking tech, but refrained from using it on their ships to maintain the spirit of the treaty. However, in 2387, the Romulan supernova occurred and wiped out Romulus, Remus and several other Star Empire worlds. What happens after then is still being written, but it is known that eventually the unification of Romulus and Vulcan resulted in the founding of Nivar the renaming of Vulcan to the dual home of Vulcans and Romulans. As Vulcan was a UFP member world, this would have meant that the Romulans, no longer under the banner of the Star Empire, would also have allied with the Federation. As such, a continued ban of cloaking tech would have been unnecessary, so the Treaty of Alderaan was annulled, and again it's not established when exactly this joining happened, but in beta canon, Romulus joined Starfleet around the 26th century. What is certain is that the Federation starships had cloaking devices on them by the 32nd century. Starfleet has so often been on the back foot when it comes to cloaking tech, with the most pioneering research into them being how to overcome them, nullify the advantage rather than catch up. If you look at it this way, I can see why the Federation didn't consider the Treaty of Algeron a bad deal. Every cloak they had encountered so far was eventually countered, and their own stealth tech was nothing to snip at either. However, the instances where a cloaked enemy got ahead of them often did result in major incidents, so maybe they would have benefited from first-hand experience. Thanks for watching this summary of the Federation's history with cloaking devices. What do you think of the treaty? A fair deal for 88 years of practical peace with the Star Empire? I've been Rick. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Or not, because cloaking. Goodbye.